Hello everyone. I hope you and your families are doing well. I am Naimi Susarayi, a PhD candidate at the Gorgon University of Agricultural Science and Natural Resource in Iran. And right now I am a PhD visiting a student at the Center of Plant Biotechnology and Genomics in Madrid. In this video, I would like to talk about a study of drought stress effects on plants and the importance of land races in plant breeding. Generally, there are two types of stresses that influence plant growth uh, and development, named as biotic and abiotic stresses. Biotic factors are living organisms in the ecosystem, and abiotic stress is uh, defined as environmental conditions such as drought, extreme temperatures, rain, salt, and heavy metals that reduce growth and yield below optimum levels. Drought is one of the most important abiotic stresses that negatively influence plant growth and development, generally from agricultural and physiological viewpoints Drought stress occurs uh, when the available water for plants in the soil is decreased due to low soil moisture at a certain time. Uh, Today, alterations in rainfall pattern in many regions occur due to global climate change that are leading to increase in temperature and atmospheric carbon dioxide levels. So, uh, global climate alternations are the main factor triggering drought stress worldwide. However, uh, there are many other reasons for drought, such as high temperature, high intensity of light, and dry wind, that's all of which increase evaporation of water from soil and also increase water losses from plants and uh, subsequently facilitate plant exposure to water stress. Drought effects on plants. Mm, to be honest, I cannot go into the details in this video and I will explain briefly. One, morphological and anatomical characteristics. Drought stress leads to decreasing height and plant size, leaf size and leaf area, number of leaves, a number of stomata. Mm, I will more explain about stomata in the next slide and also reduction of uh, biomass production. Uh, while the root to shoot ratios of plants usually increased uh, for water uptake. However, uh, the total biomass of plants are reduced considerably. Stomata are small pores in plant leaves that can be opened or closed to regulate gas exchange. Estomata can completely be closed under severe drought stress, which is closely depend on plant species. So tolerant species control the status of their estomata to allow uh, carbon fixation and photosynthesis and uh, um, improving water use efficiency. In the following, I will explain about photosynthesis also. Plant growth and development. As you know, plant growth and development are depend on cell division, cell elongation, and cell, cell differentiation. Cell differentiation describes the process that leading to the formation of different cell types of the adult organism. All of these phases are affected under drought conditions by loss of turgor, disordered enzyme activities, and decreased energy supply from photosynthesis. So a drought can severely reduce plant growth and development. Three is plant water relationships. Relative water content or RWC is uh, an important indicator of water status in plants. It reflects the balance between water supply to the leaf tissues and transpiration rates. Reduction of RWC is the earliest effect of drought on plants. A low RWC decreases the leaf water potential and leads to stomal closing. As you can see, stomal closure is a complicated process that prevents water loss from a transpiration pathway. 
photosynthesis. Uh, photosynthesis is the process by which uh, green plants make uh, carbohydrates from uh, carbon dioxide and water uh, using energy captured from sunlight by chlorophyll and releasing excess oxygen as a byproduct. Chlorophyll is a pigment are located in a plant's chloroplasts, uh, which are tiny structure in a plant cell. Uh, this is where uh, photosynthesis takes place. Um, chlorophyll absorb uh, energy from sunlight and this energy is used to convert carbon dioxide into carbohydrates in photosynthesis process. A reduction of photosynthesis is one of the main effects of drought in plants. There are many reasons for this effect, including a decrease in, uh, in the leaf expansion rate and the low leaf surface, low carbon dioxide uptake due to um, stomal closure, as I mentioned before, and the, um, a decrease in the chlorophyll content of leaves and also rise the production of uh, reactive oxygen species. Another effect of uh, drought on plants is uh, mineral nutrition changing the uh, nutrient uptake by the roots and uh, they transport to the shoots is an important effect of water deficit on plants. Membranes stability is uh, in the roots play an essential role in the appropriate mineral nutrition of plants. Therefore, preservation of uh, the membranes stability is a very, very important factor in plant resistance to drought stress. Hormonal balance, um, disturbing uh, disruption, the hormonal balance is another effect of drought on plants. In order to save what time, I skip the, the details. Protein, amino acids, and mineral content. Drought conditions change the quantity and quality of plant proteins. Generally, the protein content decreases under the water deficit due to uh, suppression of their uh, synthesis. Lipid. Drought stress leads to a disturbance in the association between membranes, lipids, and uh, protein, and also decreases the membrane bone enzyme activity and the transport capacity of the bilayer. And the last effect of uh, drought on plants is molecular response. Uh, many gene expression patterns change uh, when plants are exposed to drought stress. First, the expression of genes involving um, early response, such as uh, signal transduction, tra transcription factors, and translation factors. And in the next, uh, changes in the expression of genes involved in late response, um, such as water transport, osmotic balance, oxidative stress, and damage repair process. Uh, according to the aforementioned factors about the global warming leading to increased drought stress around the world and also effects of uh, drought on crop yield and productivity, we need to introduce tolerant plants to resist again, um, again uh, drought stress. Uh, realization and reflection on the value cont contained in the biodiversity uh, and the genetic treasure available in exotic and wild species provide possibilities to select tolerant plants uh, capable to cope with environmental stresses. There are uh, many wild species and land races that can grow in uh, different regions and uh, there are uh, resistance to many environmental stresses. Uh, land races are uh, traditional species um, that uh, cultivated in specific locations and are one of the most important components of plant genetic resource. The main contribution of land races in plant breeding programs is uh, their potential to adapt in stressful conditions. So utilization of land races that are tolerant to abiotic stresses is a promising approach to alleviate the negative effects of stresses and to increase water use efficiency and also crop production in 
uh, vulnerable areas. Thank you so much for your kind attention and stay safe, please.